Vertex 42 makes it easy for you to identify input and output cells and their templates. One of the first things to do is check out the instructions. Almost all templates have a separate page or an area within the template that provides instructions and areas to begin filling out information. In this example, using the budget calculator, you can see that there's a separate page or sheet labeled instructions. Simply click on it and you'll be taken to an area that will provide step-by-step -step guidance on how to use the template. It will include identifying which cells are inputs and which cells are outputs. Alternatively, Vertex 42 works hard to design the templates so that they are easy to understand. Most Vertex 42 input cells are typically either boxed, such as this cell here, or they are some color other than gray, typically a green or blue. In this case, you can see that the budget input cells are blue with a gray box and the actual input cells are white with a gray box. Now the most important thing to understand when looking for inputs is to make sure that the cells are actually empty and that there's no formula residing there. So in this case, knowing that starting cash balance is probably input cell because it's boxed, we'll simply click on it. And you'll notice in the formula bar up here that is completely empty. There's no formula and there's no input. So perhaps we might assume that total income is also an input. If we click on this cell, you'll quickly notice that the cell is actually not empty. While it says zero, there's a formula. It's referencing some other cell. So knowing this, we know that this is actually an output cell and not an input. The fact that it's gray also gives us a clue that it's an output. So as we scroll down, we'll see a green section called income. Now odds are this will be inputs simply because there's no values at all in them. And they um, logically would be inputs. But to verify, again, we'd click on a cell and we'd look at the formula bar and notice that there is no formula or anything present. We can also click on the actual column to double check to make sure that there's no input and again it's empty. However, if we click on the difference column here, we'll notice there is a formula so this again is an output and just based on the color alone you could probably assume that. Let's go ahead and enter some information in. Start with a $2,000 cash balance. Just simply type that number into the input and hit enter. Let's go ahead down here and say add some wages and tips. Let's say we make $2,000 a month and we want to put that information into there. And let's say we make $500 in interest on bank accounts and money market accounts. And the rest of it we're just going to leave blank. Now it's important that when inputting uh, numbers into inputs there's a couple options. You can type them in like we just did or you can actually enter small formulas. So let's say our interest income was actually made up of two bank accounts. Let's say one of them was $300 and one was $200. What we could do is simply click on the cell we want to add this small formula to, put an equal sign into the formula, and then add the $300 and then simply add $200 to that. We can also multiply, divide, and subtract with simple formulas. I'm going to use the rental income here as an, another example. And in this case, I'm going to enter the formula in the formula bar up here at the top. You can also do it straight in the cell. But I'm going to put an equal sign here. And let's say I had two apartments. So I'm going to put a two. And each one of those I rented for $800 a piece. So I'm going to multiply by 800. Simply put that into the formula bar. Hit enter. And you'll notice down in the cell again that the uh, rental income is updated to be the $1,600. Now there are times when we may mistakenly confuse an output cell for an input cell. And there's basically two ways to correct this situation. If I'm in a cell and I've mistakenly started to type a value into it, then all I need to do to get out of it, if I'm still in the cell and haven't hit enter, is to simply press escape. That will basically override what I was doing and put back the original formula. Now if I have already typed in a value and I hit enter, so that the value has been changed and I haven't done any other work then all I need to do is simply undo that change by using the Microsoft undo feature which in my 2007 version is right here you simply click on it or you can use control Z and as you see that will basically unwind the change that I made and put the formula back in